Good morning and welcome to Pet News. I'm Brian Kilcommons, your host. Now, the hyacinth macaw, primarily found in the tropical rainforests of South America, is in danger of becoming extinct due to the heavy exploitation for the pet trade. Dr. Blake Hawley is an avian veterinarian. He is working on a project that could help save these exotic birds. Hi, Dr. Hawley. Thanks for coming with us. Thanks, Brian. Why is the hyacinth macaw in danger? Well, a couple of reasons. One, as you mentioned, the exploitation for the pet trade, which fortunately is no longer allowed in the United States, but there are still people out there that have to make a living in some of these countries. So these birds can provide a, a good economic uh, future for them just by trapping them. What do these birds sell for? What's um, the financial? In a, in a pet store, you might get this bird for anywhere from seven to ten thousand dollars. A very high priced bird. Now, of course, this is a very rare bird, and that's why it commands that kind of price. Now, obviously, these natives aren't able to get that kind of price, but still, three or four hundred dollars to them may be a year's salary. Welcome to Pet News. I'm your host, Brian Kilcommons. You know, pets are like members of our family, and chances are you've had your dog or cat longer than you've had your kids. But it may be hard for a pet who has been treated like a member of the family to suddenly adapt when a new baby comes into the picture. Dr. William Kotler and Susan Weinstein from the St. Barnabas Medical Center in New Jersey. They started a program called Pets and Babies, designed to ease the transition and help pets accept the newest family member. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. What is Pets and Babies Seminar? Pets and Babies Seminar, it's a, about a two and a half hour program that we offer quarterly. It's really fun and informal and it has two components to it. We have a veterinarian and we have Dr. Kotler who is a pediatrician and pulmonologist and they answer all the questions about how to help as far as bringing a new baby into the home because in our population in particular we seem to have um, the first babies are usually their pets. The illegal pet industry, especially in third world countries, is devastating wild bird populations. After arms and drug smuggling, illegal wildlife trade is the most profitable with the least amount of risk. Faunalink was created to address saving these birds. And joining us live from the Bronx Zoo's World of Birds is Faunalink's Dr. Donald Bruning. Hey, Dr. Bruning, how are you? Very good. Good. What is Faunalink, and why did you create it? Well, Faunalink is really a group of cooperators who wanted to do something about helping save birds that people don't want, that need to be bred, that need to be held, found homes for them, and hopefully then generate young which will replace the need for taking any more birds from the wild. Okay, and we have a phone call from Linda. Hey, Linda, you're on Pet News. Hi. Hi, how are you? Happy Hi. holidays. Thank you, and same to you. Thank you. Um, I have a cat. Her name is Holly. She's mm. three years old. Okay. And I like to get another cat. Um, I was thinking maybe about a year old. I don't know if that would be good to introduce them together like sure. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Just do it slowly and understand that it does take time, mm -hmm. okay? And okay. again, after the holidays. Okay. It's, it's way too crazy, and most uh, animals are a little bit upset because of, there's increased traffic and doors are open and okay. presents and wrappings. So wait till after the holidays. Go to your local humane society. Mm -hmm. Make sure the cat is tested. You want to get it to your vet before you introduce it to your own animal again. Right. All righty? Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you. Thanks for calling Pet News. And if you have any questions, you can call us at one 888 tell fox We'll be doing another pet line segment later on in the show. If you have any holiday questions, and remember, you don't want to give a pet for Christmas. And this week's Pet Picture of the Week is Splash, CD, Sado, and Sasha from Casper, Wyoming. It is often perceived as just some new age remedy, but alternative therapies are beginning to earn the respect of many mainstream veterinarians. And we have Dr. Alan Schoen and Catherine Greider with us today. Catherine, you did a piece for Self Magazine yes, that's right. on this. What research did you have to do with this? And wh why did you do this to begin with? Well, basically, the reason we did it, we, we were doing a whole section on alternative medicine for people. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we found that people who had tried some of these therapies, like acupuncture, um, herbs, for example, homeopathy, were starting to get interested in doing it for their pets as well. Um, and in particular, there was an editor who had a dog who was going through acupuncture. So we decided to add that to the section. Welcome to Pet News. I'm your host, Brian Kilcommons. And as you can see, we're out on 6th Avenue and 48th Street. And I'm with Kelly Van Oss from St. Hubert's Animal Welfare. And we're with the Petmobile. Hi, Kelly. Hi. What is the Petmobile? 
Petmobile O'Brien is St. Hubert's Pet Adoption Center on Wheels. It's specially designed to bring homeless pets on wheels directly into the community. So what exactly does it do? Well, we'll be loading the vehicle up with pets, okay. um, healthy and adoptable dogs and cats, taking them to uh, schools, street fairs, uh, corporate centers, as well as retail outlets, such as shopping malls. This is a seal. Is she affectionate? Oh, she is very affectionate. Yes, yeah, she is. She is. Um, she has her moments, but she's, um, she's, uh, but she's very affectionate. She is. Um, she's a big part of my household. Do you, do you think she recognizes you? Um, I think she does. She's been around people so often that um, she uh, she likes people. She so, likes people. Yeah, but I think she. Uh, is this for lunch or just in general? <laughs> 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 no, she's uh, she's very social. Okay, and this is a Burmese python. This is a Burmese python. How much does she weigh, and how big is she? She weighs about 50 pounds, and she's last time I measured her, and it's very difficult to measure. Her, um, she's about about 12 feet long. The lines are open. It's pet hotline time, and we're here with Dr. Karen Rosenthal. She stayed with us to answer your questions about medicine and behavior. So if you have any questions and you'd like us to uh, give you some answers, give us a call. The number is 1-888-TELL-FOX. And we have Deborah from Bridgeport, Connecticut on the line. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? Good. How can we help you? Well, I recently moved to a home that has radiators. Okay. My three indoor cats insist on lounging on them. Oh, they like okay. that. Okay, and I was wondering if that's harmful to their health. Lounging on for a cat, warm substances. <laughs> <laughs> there could be anything better. For the cat. It's very warm. You pick the cat up, and the cat is very warm. Yeah, like the cat's toasty. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it's fine for them. You you know you want to make sure that they're not radiators that have very hot steam heat coming out through it. But just typical modern radiators will be fine. Yeah. It, it's good for cats. I, I think your cats are yeah. very happy about that, Linda. Yeah, they seem to be. Thanks for calling Pet News. Thank you for having us. Is therapeutic riding a new concept? No, therapeutic riding has been around for ages. In Germany and Switzerland, it's used as a medical treatment for neurologically impaired clients. In England, recreational and sports. 1969, a national association was formed in North America called NARA, North American Riding for the Handicapped Association. And in the United States, we've, um, right now, we have almost 500 operating centers across the country. Trooper is a great help to Patty, who uses a wheelchair. Trooper will turn out the lights, he'll press elevator buttons, he'll get the telephone. If I fall out of the chair, I can send him for the phone. He'll carry things out of stores, groceries into the house, picks up things that I drop. So how do the people at Needs feel about the pairing of these dogs with their new owners? It literally is a match made in heaven. Coming up next, we'll continue talking with Sheila O'Brien. Plus, we'll meet a woman that relies on assistance in our everyday life. Don't go away. Stay with us. A command equals response, either the dog's or yours. So if you give the dog a command, it doesn't follow it, you want to be able to enforce the command. And you don't do that being loud or angry. It's a matter of fact. Down. Good. All right, Donna. No, very good girl. Good. After the training session, again, you should do it two, three times a day. Use your commands throughout the day. You can do some play time. All right. Good girl. Very nice. What she just did, she jumped up. I didn't want her to jump. I put her into the sit and then praised her for sitting. Well, <clears throat> have a good week, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. See you next week on Pet News.